Namaste, welcome. I had a very busy day. Oh. So um, let's make sure we have everything that we need for our, this is going to be the perfect practice for me. This is exactly what I need, some grounding today. Um, we are, we need our bolsters, our cushions, blankets, maybe two, one foot underneath, so it's nice and warm and plush on your mat. And one for covering yourself so you can get extra cozy. And some cushions, always a mess. So just have within reach, you're obviously at home, so you're either going to be near the sofa where you have cushions or near your bedroom where you have pillows. Find things around your home to use um, to help prop you, support you when you need this. So let's come into our comfortable seat. I'm sitting on my block, you can sit on your cushion or a folded blanket. Let's bring the thumb and the ring finger to touch. This ring finger represents earth element. So today we're working with continuing our series with the five elements theory. Uh, which is based on the Taoist model of nature. It complements and exists parallel to the Samkhya philosophy of um, yoga, Indian practice, Indian philosophy around the five elements. So the two theories are very, very closely aligned. Ground down through your root here. So really connect with the earth underneath your sit bones. Inhaling, draw the navel in, lengthen through the front of your body and the spine. Lift your crown up towards the sky. Relax your shoulders down and away. And in Prithvi Mudra, thumb and ring finger connected, bring in the fire and earth elements together there and close your eyes for the first few moments of your practice and with each out breath really focus on your out breath the quality of your out breath this releasing breath is the breath that helps to let go all that we no longer need. The practice of the earth element is a practice of releasing into the earth. The earth can support and stabilize us. We can shed what we do not need into the earth in the way that we do with our biomechanical bodies. We release all of the excess, all of the toxins from our body into the earth. And the earth processes them, absorbs, processes, and releases them as nutrients to feed the earth itself, the plants, the trees, the animals. So we are part of this life cycle, this uh, cycle of life between us and the earth nature and this is what the elements the five element theory builds on so notice if your out breath is slightly longer than your in breath notice where that out breath starts from and finishes bringing your awareness to the exhale You probably notice that the exhale starts at the belly here, at the abdomen, where the stomach and spleen organs are, the intestines, the small and large intestines. These are the organs that are responsible for assimilating, digesting, processing, and then eliminating. So this is when we we feel the out breath, we draw in the navel to the spine. 
because that contracts all of these organs here. One more full breath in. And this time as you release the breath, upon pranayam, which is the outward energy, release the breath through open mouth. Bringing your hands together and namaskar at the heart center, opening our practice by chanting Om three times. And I invite you to offer the first Om to the earth, the second Om to all of its natural wealth and resources, the plants, the animals, and the third Om for yourself. and this, yourself as representing the human race. Om. 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 to your eyebrow center. Namaste. And welcome, yogis. So our practice today is going to be very nourishing. So we take in the nutrients. We take in the chi, the, the breath, the energy to nourish our bodies. It gets all processed within our organs, and then we release what we no longer need. We do that with our breath. We do that with food, with water, with emotions. Our body is one massive filtering organism. We receive, we filter, we release. So let's start by tapping. And we'll, we'll stay seated today. We'll stand up next week. And we'll start with the spleen meridian. So the two organs we're working on and the associated meridians, the stomach and the spleen. The spleen is the yin meridian. And so that is the one that travels along the inside of the legs. So it starts on the outside edge of your big toe. So I have put my toe, my soles and my feet together. So just tapping on the big toe here, on the side of the big toe. And I'm using my two index, uh, my index and middle finger to do that. And then all the way along the foot, so above the arch of the foot to the ankle and heel. And then now that we're traveling onto the leg, you might want to fold in your fingers so you can use your knuckles. And the spleen travels all the way up the inside of the legs. So it travels and traces the same journey as the liver meridian. So pause around the knees, the inside of the knees, and then the thighs, all the way to the inside of the hip flexors. And then the spleen sort of travels up along the abdomen here, just outside. It does sort of peter in towards the navel and then peters out again. And we'll go all the way up to the chest. And then it actually ends at the root. So if we want to tap, we can tap the outside of underneath our armpit, parallel with we're wearing a bra. That's where it would be parallel to. So the sort of sixth rib and then the other side. So Peter's along the middle and then sort of goes around the outside back up here and then ends at the root of the tongue. So let's just poke the tongue out and curl the tongue back in to stimulate the spleen meridian, which ends there. I'll do that three times. And now let's work our way down. So for the stomach meridian, which is the pear here, the yang, it starts on the outside of our nostrils. So I'm going to use my two fingers to tap on either side of my nostrils. Oh. 
my dog's having a good old snore there. And then I'm just going to travel down to my chest, to either side of my sternum. So now the stomach again travels down either side of the sternum and then peters down. And it's a bit more in than the spleen. So the spleen is along the outer side and the stomach is on the inside. So I'm going to make little gentle fists here, working my way down to my groin. And then the stomach meridian travels down the fronts of the legs. So I'm going to tap along my thigh to my knees, down my shins, and it ends at the big toe. So I'll tap along the top all the way to my big toe, and I'll use my two fingers at the big toe. And then let's come back down now on the inside again for the spleen. So the spleen connects to empathy. And we can express empathy once we have an understanding. So it's often very difficult to have empathy for something we do not understand. So when we absorb and receive information through our senses, sound, sight, we process it cognitively and emotionally. And then in order to have empathy, we need to be able to fully understand the experience that others have in order to step into their shoes and understand how it feels to be them, how it feels to walk in their shoes. So now I'm traveling up my abdomen and then I'm gonna come up to the chest and then I'm gonna cross under, cross one hand across my body to just underneath my armpit, not quite at my armpit and then the other side as well. And I'm using my fist for that and then coming up here and then it ends at the tongue so I'll poke out the tongue three times and curl it back in. You're lucky you're doing this at home and nobody has to look at you. And now let's work all the way back down for the stomach and the stomach connects to anxiety. So you know a feeling of butterflies in your tummy when you're nervous or overexcited. So this is, this is related to that feeling of anxiety or nervousness. So let's travel down. And so now we're gonna travel more towards the middle of the abdomen, the hip flexors and down the front of the legs all the way. to the big toe, second toe, second toe. And there we go. So now I'm just gonna give my toes a little massage while I'm here. So in yin, you could always have available a little bottle of um, massage oil or essential oils, because you don't, we're not balancing and doing very much on our feet. You can always rub your feet with a little bit of warm oil very lovely treat to yourself in this practice. Okay. Squeeze my ankles a bit, all that feels much better. So let's come directly into child's pose. And we're gonna come into a wide-legged child's pose here. So I invite you to lay down your blanket on your mat. Big toes to touch, so the connection between the big toes where the spleen meridian starts, knees wide. So already you know, as we're working on the stomach and spleen, the tops of our legs, the inside of our legs here, so which is why we take a wide child's pose. And we're gonna add a gentle twist to the torso where the organs sit. So let's start with the left hand, lift it up first. So reach up with your left hand. You can bring your ring and thumb to touch for the earth element. Exhale, thread that left arm underneath you and bring your shoulder and ear to the mat. And let's take the right hand and rest it on our lower back or on your right hip, yogi's choice. So this is a very gentle twist at the torso, the abdomen where the spleen and stomach organs sit.
the element of earth connects to very late Indian summer. So we're just past that period. It also relates to whatever there's change during the year. So as today, uh, the big change here in the UK is the clocks have gone back one hour. Fall back in fall, clocks fall back in fall. So that's a change for us. So having an earth element practice helps to stabilize us during this change, helps us to process the change. We'll be here for another full minute. And perhaps connect with what you wish to release. What is it? What are you processing? What are you digesting? Either cognitively, emotionally. What are you working through? And then release what you do not need from that process. So to speak, the waste products, the the toxins. So it could be thoughts that you have, critical thoughts, insecurities, doubt. Could be a nervousness, worry. Take a full breath in through your nose and release it through open mouth. Bring the right hand back to the earth if it's wrapped around your lower back or your right, left hip. And rise up. Let's just open out that arm slowly. And then bring that left hand down. Let's move to the other side. So move slowly. So this practice of yin is a much slower, stiller practice than hatha yoga. So flow up with your right finger. Again, you can have your ring and thumb connected. And then thread that right arm underneath the left, bringing your right shoulder and ear to the mat. You have the option of taking your left hand to your lower back or all the way over to your right hip. And if you have laid your blanket on the earth, this should feel very cozy. Supportive, comforting even. When we feel stress or we feel burdened, overly burdened, where you feel like you're kind of feeling overloaded. This pose in particular, wide legged child's pose, this gentle twist, helps to release some of that burden, some of that load. So you can see how the language, the physiological language, crosses over with the emotional language. So the theory is very much based on how our bodies, organs and systems connect with our emotional body. We'll be here for one more minute. So soften and release. Practice of Yin is about surrendering the body, softening the body.
one more breath. Return the left hand to the earth, pressing into your left hand, rise up slowly. Reach up with your right arm, and then flow it back down towards the earth. We're going to move into dragon pose here. So this is where you might need your props. So at the top of your mat, you can place your low footstool, your bolster, or a couple of large pillows. Bring your knees in. So come up into table, tuck your toes for a moment. We're going to step forward with the left foot. So step the left foot forward to the outside of your mat. And you might want to, so if you have a blanket on, your, on the earth, that's great. If you need to fold it up, so if your left knee needs a little bit more support or protection, place a folded blanket underneath your left knee. So your right foot is at the outside edge of your mat. Sink into that right hip. Feel a lengthening down the front of your left thigh. So you can stay on your hands here. Your hands could be directly on the earth. So we'll stay in high dragon for a moment. And then we'll move into a different variation. So feel the connection with the air through your feet. Feel the extension down the front of the left thigh in particular, sink into that right hip and then you should have a gentle sensation on the inside of the right thigh. So stimulating both the stomach and spleen meridian here. The spleen is where the organ with which we fight infections. It is a a place where synthesis takes place. So it traps organisms that have arrived into the body, and synthesizes them. So on an emotional level, the spleen is what helps to bring us clarity, clear thinking. And through this clarity and clear thinking, we develop a clearer understanding. Our perceptions of others, our perceptions of the world are much clearer, leading to more empathy. We'll be here for one more minute. And we're going to move into low dragon. So we're going to bring our forearms either onto our pillows, our cushions, or onto the earth. And you can now soften through your crown, your head, your neck and shoulders. And see if you can sink a little bit deeper into that right hip. And extend a little bit more through that left thigh. Through the stomach we take in. We absorb, we receive. 
And then from the sensation there, we can feel a fulfillment, a nourishment, a satisfaction. But likewise, we can also feel bloated, extend, overextended, in which case we then need to release, let go. Six more breaths here in dragon, low flying dragon. And the last breath, take a full breath in through your nose and release the breath through open mouth. Upon pranayam. Letting go. Rise to your hands slowly. We're going to shuffle this right foot across our mat and move directly into sleeping swan. So just either move your bolster a little bit more in front of you so you can always rest on it, rest your arms on it. I have my dog bed there, so I might have to go back a little bit. So shuffle your right foot, so I heel toe all the way over to the other side of my mat. Supporting myself with my hands, I'm going to bring my right shin and right knee to the mat. And then sit on my right sit bone here. And then check how I'm feeling here. So I might need to reach back with my left toes. And then I come back onto my shin a little bit more. If I have a gap between my right sit bone and the earth, I can place a folded blanket or a cushion underneath your right sit bone, your right buttock. Sit up tall here. And we're going to fold forward. So this is where having your bolster, your large pillows or your low footstool might be quite handy because you can Rest your arms on those. I'm not going to use my dogs as my pillow. I don't think they'll be very happy. So bring your arms to the earth. So you can extend your arms long, or you can fold in at the elbows and rest the eyebrow center on the backs of your hands. Yogi's choice. Or you can be directly on the earth. Sleeping swan pose. I know we're working quite intensely here on the right side for the moment. The yang side. So the yang side is where all kind of the work happens. The dynamic active side. So we'll bring that side into stillness by working through it first and then move to the left side of our body, which is the more passive receptive side of the body, the yin side. The element of earth is stabilizing helps us to feel secure. It's also known as the element that mediates. And this mediation is like a, in a way kind of working through 
the connection between the earth and the body, the earth and all of the other elements. So in a way, when you imagine that you're walking on the earth and how your foot placement connects softly first with the earth to find the stability and then you rest your weight on the foot. So you're almost mediating your relationship between your feet and the earth as you're walking. Testing that the earth is secure and stable enough to support your weight. Nature is known to be the peacekeeper. Six more breaths here in Sleeping Swan. And the last breath. Take a full breath in through your nose and release it through open mouth. Bringing your hands up alongside your leg, your right leg, either knee. And then coming out of this very slowly. So taking your hips back, and then sliding your right knee back. Maybe stretch out that right leg long, push out through that heel. And then let's move over to the left side. So we're going to move into high dragon first. You may need to adjust your pillows, your bolster, your low footstool. Let's step forward with the left foot to the outside edge of the mat. And again, if you need to pad your left knee, make sure that you have a blanket, hold a blanket or a cushion available. And then sink into the left hip so that your right thigh is now tracking at an angle. make adjustments that you need because we're going to stay here for a while. So creating a sense of stability for yourself so that you may sustain it. Your hands can either be directly on the earth or on your pillows, bolster, low footstool. So now you feel the sensation down the front of the right thigh and the inside of the left thigh. The spleen, when out of balance, is connected to a sense of low self-esteem. Maybe self-blame. Compulsive or obsessive behaviors. And so by working with the chi of the spleen, we're beginning to synthesize and harmonize these more extreme negative emotions or thoughts so that we can bring balance to the whole system, both the physical, physiological, biological, and emotional systems. It's 
six more breaths here in high dragon, high flying dragon. And then on the last breath, releasing the breath through open mouth. And lowering yourself onto your forearms. And again, bring the earth up to you. Soften through your crown, neck, shoulders here. And sink a little bit deeper into that left hip. So when we're practicing together here, we're practicing silent yin. But if you're practicing at home on your own, you can always play some gentle music, some soothing music. That can perhaps help ease your nervous system. In dragon pose in particular, we can begin to feel agitation. So we can use our out breath to release that agitation, release that stress, release that nervousness we might have. Six more breaths here. And on the sixth count, release the breath through open mouth. Slowly rise up. And perhaps you roll your burst or pillow away. You're going to walk the left foot all the way across the mat, heel, toe, heel, toe. And then by supporting ourselves on our hands, lower the left shin, left knee to the mat. And then reach further back with our right toe. So you crawl your right toes further away. Come onto your left sit bone. And that might help you check back on your right leg. And if there's lots of space between your left sit bone and the earth, place a blanket or a cushion underneath. So it'll give you a little bit of added support. We're going to lengthen and then fold forward. And you can either extend your arms along on the earth. You can fold your arms and rest your eyebrow center on the back of your hands. You can use a bolster or pillows to support your arms. Sleeping swan pose. The spleen is the transportation and distribution system. So it synthesizes and extracts what is needed. Those essences which are required for our sustenance and distributes them around the body. So this is why the spleen is said to be the thought house where the thinking happens. It operates in the same way that our brain does. 
it receives, it synthesizes information, processes it, and then retains what is needed and forgets what is not needed. So if you're having lots of agitated thoughts or you're very pensive and worried, working on earth elemental practice, working particularly on spleen meridian will help to digest and process those thoughts or emotions and then help you release those extracting and keeping what is necessary and releasing what is not necessary. We're here for six more breaths. On the sixth count, release the breath through open mouth. And lift your gaze, followed by your heart, followed by your hands. Now supporting yourself on your hands, Begin to slide that left foot back, coming onto that knee, right knee. Reach back through that left leg, tucking the toe to help release all of that accumulated chi. And then we're going to come onto our sit bones here, giving us a chance to extend the legs out to the sides. So coming into dragonfly here. Now, if you're close to a wall, you can always bring yourself up against the wall. This might give you more support so that you can open your legs further. You can also sit on a folded blanket. So if you perch or sit bones on the edge of your folded blanket, again, it gives you a little bit more space. And for today's dragonfly pose, we're going to add a twist. So you can always bring your thumb and ring finger to touch. So let's twist over to the left. You can bring your hands to the earth. You can also lean a little bit more forward so that your forearm comes towards the earth or on a bolster, depending on how much movement and space you have available to you in your body. Another option is to create a little angle with your bolster. And that enables you to rest your eyebrow center on a bolster or a pillow if you lift it with blocks or more cushions. But you can be more upright as well. Yogi's choice. We're not going to be here very long. This is definitely one of my least favorite yin poses, which means I probably should practice it much more often. I have resistance to it for some reason. Mm -hmm. 
So you can really feel that this is a much deeper twist than the one that we started with. And you can feel the compression on your abdominal organs on the left side and perhaps an extension on the right side. One more breath here. Now, if you are resting on your bolster pillow, rise up. Take a moment and then turn to center very slowly. And then let's counter twist over to the left just for a moment. And then back to center. We're going to move into a half saddle pose here. Now this really depends on how you feel. We're going to fold in the right leg. So keep the left leg extended. We're going to fold in the right heel so it comes near our sit bone. See how this feels in your knee. It doesn't feel very comfortable in your knee. Then you can always just bring the sole of your foot to the earth and give yourself a bit more space there. Or you can tuck it in. Other options are you have cushions available, I'll use my blanket. You can also place a blanket or pillows or cushions underneath your knee. That might give you a bit more space. An alternative is also to place a pillow or a blanket between at the back of the knee between the thigh and the calf. And that also gives you a little bit more protection. And so you can see here that my foot's a little bit further out away from my hip. And that padding gives me a bit more support. So you can try, experiment with what feels accessible to you. Remember, you can always have your right foot on the earth if folding your heel back towards you feels too intense. Keep that left leg reaching out. And again, we're going to come into a twist here. So we're going to twist over to the left. And now you can immediately feel that down the front of the right thigh. You can stay upright here. Or you can fold down. I prefer to stay upright because then I feel that more, a stronger sensation in my hips. So this is a half saddle variation with a twist. So we're still twisting over to the left. Element of earth is patient, warm, nurturing. These qualities of empathy that we invoke through this Earth elemental practice by working on the stomach and spleen meridians. Echoes and mirrors the way in which Earth supports us. Three more breaths here. And on the third breath, release the breath through open mouth. Turn your head to center, followed by your hands and heart. Now with great care, releasing this left leg that's folded under, extend it long. And maybe windshield wiper your toes one way then the other. Give yourself a little rub if you need. 
So let's move our bolster or pillows over to the right side now. So we can do our twist in dragonfly and then half saddle to this side. So I'm going to bring my blanket behind me and slightly sit on it so I lift my seat a little bit. So lengthen first and then exhale over to the right. So you can stay fairly upright. You can begin to fold down towards the, the bolster or the blankets or cushions. If that feels destabilizing, then come up slightly higher. Remember, you can always layer up. So you can layer more cushions on top of your boss or large pillows. The emotions that we are working with in terms of letting go are those that destabilize us. The emotions that we are creating and cultivating are those that stabilize us. Six more breaths here. And then on the sixth count, release the breath through open mouth. With a gentle sigh. And then lift your gaze and walk your hands back towards you. Turn your head to center, followed by your arms. And let's count a twist to the other side just for a moment. And then back to center. Now we're going to fold in the left leg. And again, take precautions because it might feel very different on one side compared to the other side. So remember the first option is keep your foot on the earth. The second option is to bring your heel to the side. And then you can bring it increasingly closer to you and even underneath you. And remember you can use your blanket to Lift that knee, place it between the calf and the thigh. There you have less. So your yogi's option. And then we're going to count a twist over to the right. And I'm going to stay quite high up. If you want to come close to the earth, you can. You'll notice the sensation changes in this left leg. So the closer you come to the earth, the less you feel it on the left leg and the more you feel it on the inside of your, right side of your abdomen. So the earth element practice is a great one whenever you're going through personal change or life change. 
whether it's a change in career, at work, in your personal life, the seasons, your relationships, perhaps even your age, when you have a birthday. Assimilate, absorb, digest, process, extract what you need and release all else. Six more breaths here. And again, on the last count, release the breath through open mouth. Turn your head to center, followed by your heart and hands, and then with great care, release this left foot. And perhaps your windshield wiper or feet one way or the other with helping hands, take them underneath your thighs and your feet in a little bit closer. Let's sit here for a moment. You'll recognize this is a variation of the yogi squat, malasana, which is a, working on the root chakra, which is connected to the element of earth. And we're going to lower to the earth for our shavasana. And you can rest your back of your knees on a bolster or a large pillow, or you can extend your legs long, yogi's choice. Maybe you have a blanket underneath you, and then perhaps a blanket on top. Perhaps you have an eye pillow. So this is your Shavasana. And remember, I leave you here in your Shavasana so that you can take as long as you need. Maybe you have the lights down low. Perhaps you have a candle burning somewhere. And soften here, especially the big toe, the second toe, the whole of the foot, the whole of each foot, softening, relaxing, falling out. The ankles, the lower legs, the knees, upper legs, hips and pelvis. Lower back, middle back, upper back, shoulders, upper arms, elbows, lower arms, wrists, your hands, the whole of your hands, the thumb, index, middle ring, little fingers. The abdomen, rib cage, chest, throat and neck, jaw, cheeks, brow, ears, top of your crown, everything softening. Releasing, letting go, 
allowing the earth to hold you here, support you, stabilize you. After your body, your mind, your emotions have digested, processed, filtered, extracted all that you need that serves you. Release, eliminate, let go of that which does not serve you into the earth. For although it may not serve you, it may serve nature. It may serve others. I invite you to stay here in Shavasana for at least another five to six minutes. Know that this will help you feel nourished. Know that when you finish your practice, when you rise up from Shavasana to move slowly, Closing your time on the mat, this space that you have created with Om and Three Shantis, soft and sweet. Om Shanti, Shanti. Shanti. Thank you, my beautiful yogis. <laughs>